Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video, available at laurashu.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about what's new in Lightroom 5.5 and Lightroom Mobile. I'll also talk about some positive changes in the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription offering. Now Lightroom 5.5, just like any free update, has support for new cameras, it has some new lens profiles, and bug fixes. You can find out more details about these changes on my blog. Beyond this, enhancements are designed to support Lightroom Mobile, which is available to Creative Cloud subscribers. And I'll talk more about the subscription at the end. But keep in mind that if you're not a subscriber, you can get a free 30-day trial to experiment with what's new. I'll talk about all of these in more detail, but to give you an overview, what's new includes a new Lightroom Mobile app for the iPhone, the addition of rating stars to Lightroom Mobile on both the iPad and the iPhone, syncing of collection sort order. So if on your desktop computer you rearranged your collection, Lightroom Mobile will show you this sort order. Direct web sharing of your synced collections right here from the collections panel here in Lightroom on the desktop. And then the ability on the iPhone and iPad to filter on multiple criteria. Let's first talk about the new Lightroom Mobile app for the iPhone. Remember that Lightroom Mobile for the iPad was released with Lightroom 5.4. Now we can easily sync collections of photos from Lightroom on our desktop to both our iPhones and our iPads, do basic work on our photos with these devices, and have this work seamlessly sync back to our desktop catalogs. We can also set up our iPhones and iPads to automatically import photos taken with these devices and have these automatically transfer to our desktop computers and Lightroom catalogs. Finally, we can share any photos in Lightroom Mobile on Facebook, by email, and more. Adobe calls this the lean back experience. We're no longer constrained to sitting at our computers to enjoy, do some basic work with, or share our photo collection. If you're an Android user wondering what's in this for you, keep in mind that Adobe has said that after the iPhone will come Android support. Before I jump to the new iPhone app, I just want to point out that I'm signed in to my Adobe account. I clicked on the identity plate here and signed in. And then I've created a couple collections of photos. Lightroom Mobile works with collections of photos rather than folders of photos. There's a video on my blog that talks more about creating and using collections with Lightroom Mobile. I then clicked on the little boxes here to tell Lightroom to sync these collections over to my mobile devices. Lightroom doesn't actually copy the master files, the, the huge raw files, up to the cloud and then down to my mobile devices. It creates smart previews, which are compressed DNG or raw files. They're much smaller, they sync faster, and take up a lot less space. I'll jump over to the iPhone and I'll tap on the Lightroom app, which you can find for free in your App Store. Now, for those of you familiar with the iPad app, the iPhone app has the same functionality. I'm not going to take the time in this particular video to go through all the details, so look to my blog in the coming days as I post more videos covering the details. As I tap to scroll down, you can see the two collections that I told my desktop to sync to my mobile devices. I'll tap on a collection, and then I'll tap on the first photo, and I'll show you the new feature that allows you to assign star ratings. Notice in the bottom left the little flag here. That means I'm in flag mode. If I swipe up, I'm assigning a pick flag. If I swipe down, I'm assigning the reject flag. I'll go ahead and pick this photo. The flag at the bottom left shows a little check mark in it, which means that it's picked rather than rejected. To get to star rating, I need to tap on the flag. That switches it to star mode. Now as I swipe up, I'm assigning stars. Swipe down to remove stars. Let me just go to the next photo. If I want to assign flag, I need to take this out of star mode by tapping on it, and I'll swipe down to reject this photo. Having to toggle between flags and stars is awkward, and hopefully Adobe will change this going forward, but I'm happy that we at least have the ability to add stars now. I'll go back to grid view, and I'm going to two-finger tap. Lightroom Mobile is showing me flag status here. The plus-minus badges mean that those photos have develop work done but the first two photos have flags assigned. If I two-finger tap again, you'll see the stars that I've assigned. 
Two finger tap shows me more metadata. I'll do it a few times to get back to showing no information. Now that we can assign rating stars, we can also filter based on them. I'm going to tap on the name of the collection in the top center, and I'm going to choose to show just my one or more star photos in this collection. Let me throw in here that with Mobile 1.1, we can also now filter on multiple criteria. So I could filter on the pick flag and one or more stars, for example, or unflagged and picked. I'll click back on the name of the collection to collapse this, and we see just those photos. To go back to seeing all, I'll click on the collection name, show all, and collapse again. Now one additional feature that I forgot to mention in the overview is the ability to open photos from Lightroom Mobile directly into third-party apps. We used to have to save them from Lightroom Mobile to our camera roll and then go open them in a third-party app. To do so, here in Grid View, I'm going to tap and hold on a photo until I get this menu. Next, I'm going to tap on Open In, and I'll get the choice of apps on my iPhone that support photographs. I'll cancel out of this. Now, just like Lightroom Mobile on the iPad, we can do some basic develop work. I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to go into the first set of settings here, which are the basic panel settings. I'll change the white balance to Auto, and then I'll tap on the Crop tool over here on the right, and I'll tap and drag to crop this photo. I'll tap back on the Crop tool to put it away. The middle icon gets you into the Lightroom presets, not presets you've created, but the presets that ship with Lightroom. OK, so I've worked on this photo. I'll tap to go back to Grid View and then Collection View. Before I jump back to Lightroom on the desktop, I want to show you how Auto Import works. When I started Lightroom Mobile on the iPhone, it set up a collection where all of my iPhone photos will go. I'm going to jump out to my camera here, and I'm going to take a really quick snapshot of my sleeping puppy. And then I'm going to go back to Lightroom Mobile. And in a minute here, you're going to see that this photo is automatically imported here into Lightroom on my iPhone. There we go. I could work on it here on my iPhone. I could share it from here. But let's go back to my desktop catalog and see what's happened while I've been gone. First, I'm going to go to my Puppy Picks collection here. Notice that I've got the flags that I assigned on my iPhone, and I've got the stars. I've also got the develop work on this photo. It's been cropped, and the white balance has been adjusted. So I didn't need to tell Lightroom Mobile to sync that back. It just all happens automatically, which I love. Now, here in the Folders panel, I now have a section for my iPhone that stores all of the photos that Lightroom Mobile uploaded to my desktop computer from my iPhone. So that snapshot that I just took. Again, I didn't have to think about that. It just happened automatically. One little tip, this folder on your computer where your iPhone photos are stored is in a really obscure place. I highly recommend that you select these photos and you drag them into a permanent location. I've created an iPhone Photos folder in my 2014 folder to put those in. Now, I didn't take the time to show it to you, but you can also have Lightroom Mobile on the iPhone or iPad import all of the existing photos in your camera roll. Just be aware that it's not going to import videos from your camera roll, so you'll still need another process to get those onto your desktop computer. OK, let me move on to other things new in Lightroom 5.5. For collections that you're syncing, you can now right-click on the collection, go to this new Lightroom Mobile Links choice, and view it or make it public on Lightroom Web View, which also was introduced with Lightroom 5.4. Making it public simply allows you to get a link that you can then share with people as you choose. Let's go ahead and just view it on the web, though. I'm in my web browser. You can see my Oregon Photos collection here. I can click on one, I can scroll through them, I can play a slideshow, etc. So not only can I view my collections on my mobile devices, but I can also do so on the web, and I can share these collections with others so they can view them on the web as well. The last thing I want to talk about is the Creative Cloud subscription, because there have been some changes there as well. Keep in mind that I don't get a commission for convincing you to go with the Creative Cloud subscription. However, I want to make sure that you understand it. 
Now, while you can subscribe to the complete Creative Cloud, which contains all of Adobe's Creative Suite programs, including Illustrator and InDesign and other programs, I'm going to focus on the Creative Cloud Photography program. In the US, this is $9.99 a month with an annual subscription. Now, Adobe has come out now and stated that this is not a limited time offer. It's not a promotion targeted just at users of earlier versions of Photoshop. It's for everybody. While they will not come out and say that they guarantee that price for life, they have said that they might increase it for inflation and other costs, but they have no intent of doubling or tripling the price after your annual subscription. In the US, for $9.99 a month with an annual subscription, you get always up-to-date versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. So if Lightroom 6 comes up, you'll automatically get it at no additional cost. You'll also get Photoshop CC 2014, which is being released at the same time as Lightroom 5.5. As I've mentioned, you get access to Lightroom Mobile for the iPad and the iPhone, as well as Lightroom WebView, with unlimited syncing of photos. You also get two gigabytes of cloud storage that you can use for other purposes. Now this used to be 20 gigabytes, and if you subscribed when Adobe was offering 20 gigabytes, you get to keep that. But for those of you subscribing from now on, they get two gigabytes. Just keep in mind that that's completely independent of what you get and what you need for Lightroom Mobile. You also get a Behance portfolio account where you can share and get feedback on your creative work. And you get Creative Cloud integration with the new Photoshop Mix app, which is being released for free at this same time. And I'll mention that in a separate blog post on what's new in the Photoshop world. For me, all of the new capabilities that we have with Lightroom Mobile to carry our Lightroom catalogs or collections of photos from it with us and to be able to work with them anywhere really make this subscription a very attractive offer. And if you're still not interested in the subscription, rest assured that Adobe has stated that they still plan to continue to offer the standalone version of Lightroom. You won't have Lightroom Mobile access, but otherwise that will continue to work as it does today. I hope you've enjoyed this video covering what's new in Lightroom 5.5 and Lightroom Mobile. Check out my blog at laurashu.com for lots of new tutorials and tips. Subscribe to my newsletter on my blog to hear about new tutorials, free webinars, and much more. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura Shu.